Today I've got the Steyr M9. We're going to do a complete disassembly on it. So welcome back to the gun bench. Let's go ahead and start. First we'll start with a magazine. So this is the 10 round magazine. They do make a 17 round, but uh, this is a borrowed gun. Um, friend asked if he uh, wanted to do a video on it, so I did. And uh, so this is what came with three of these. So we'll go ahead and remove it. It removes just like any other gun. So basically you're just going to put something long down in here to depress the retainer plate and slide that back plate off. Of course, from there, you're just going to pull out your spring and follower. So work it back down in there. I'm just going to put it back together so I don't have it on the bench. So push it down and slide it back on just make sure that it you can't push it forward if it doesn't snap into place correctly it will so so now we'll start on the frame make sure guns clear I'm just gonna pull it back a little bit and drop this disassembly lever yeah I hate this so there's other ways of doing that just the way I've done it um, so now we'll remove barrel and recoil spring Now we'll get a little bit closer up and start working on the internals. All right, so a few things that'll look familiar. You have your striker and the striker spring, which actually, unlike most uh, striker fired guns, has no bearing on the back plate itself. So you're going to be removing, obviously, the back side plate, but this striker has no bearing on it so it's normally you'd pull the striker down a little bit slide the plate off well it actually has its own slide plate, re plate retainer pin and spring in this channel and that's all that it does so I use a pick like this because when you pull it down hopefully you'll be able to see it I'm gonna pull it in and I'm gonna, you want to make sure you get it all the way down enough that you can start to slide that plate off like that so I'm just going to slide that plate off, keep my finger over everything, put it off to the side. So from there, you can pull out your firing pin and the actual drive spring or the follow spring of the guide spring, I'd say, um, firing pin spring guide. Clean that out, do whatever you need to do. Um, I guess if you wanted to remove it, you can pull this down. And it's got a clip on it. You can pop off and you can remove the spring and the guide itself. But Next, you have that actual side uh, back plate retainer that you can just pull out here. And then you have your extractor, which is pretty simple. What I like to use is these very thin, small screwdrivers I have. Um, I have them cut. I have a couple of them I've never cut with a notch. I've used it in plenty of different videos. So what I like to do is get in between the, ret the, uh, the retainer spring, tension spring, retainer, whatever you want to call it, and the extractor. So I slide that down in there, and once I... I'm going to be careful of doing this because you can end up, once it lets go, you might end up flinging the spring somewhere, especially putting it back in. So I like to pull it in there, push that back as much as I can, and usually I can get it to pop out of there like that. And then from there, you'll have the plunger and spring come out with it. So that is, unfortunately, as far as I'm going to go on the slide. You do have a loaded chamber indicator shown on the back. And here, you see where it around is right there. It pushes up and it sticks out the back. But on the A1s, I'll show you. If you look down in the same with the A2s, but the A2s did it um, a little better. If you look... 
down there, there's a small E-clip. It's going to be hard to see. Definitely hard for it to focus on it. But, let's see if I can push out of here a little bit. If I push on it, you can see the E-clip itself. It's upside down right now, but I could flip it around. Now, if you take it off, which I did, take that E-clip off, it still doesn't free up the, this is all one solid rod all the way through. It doesn't free it up. So, I'm thinking that there has to be another pin underneath the sights. Styre sights are ridiculously hard to get off. Um, and this is not my gun. If it was my gun, I'd pop them off just to, just to see. But since it's not mine, I don't want to mar it up. Um, it's, you know, it's not my place, and I really don't want to replace the sights just to um, prove what I should already know. I mean, I, I looked every which way I could. There has to be another pin underneath the sights that's keeping it in because once I had that E-clip off, you couldn't pull it out. It would come out just a little bit and stop. So, you know, I'm sure somebody else knows. I'm not. A, this is the first styre I've done um, any kind of... Why are we not focusing here? Any kind of um, work on, so... I wasn't 100% sure, and I wasn't going to tear up somebody else's gun getting there. So let me, for some reason we're not focusing right here. Alright, so next we'll work on the frame. First thing you're going to want to do is rotate your disassembly lever in line. Actually, there's a line on the frame. Is it line right there? Just rotate it pretty much right like this, then you're just gonna pull. Or, you just have to get it something underneath it to kinda give it a little lift there, but I can pull out the disassembly lever. Next, you're going to want to remove the safety rod. So if it, this is here, once it's cocked, flip this rod down and the safety will come out of the frame. One of the things I dislike about this gun. Don't they make it without it? So if you don't have one that has it, um, skip this step. But what you're going to do is if you look down in the frame right here, you're going to see that spring. And you're just going to lift that spring up a little bit and then start pushing that rod out the side. Once I get it so far, I'm just go ahead and push it all the way out. You can see it's notched. From there, what you can do, if you have the case and everything, um, you can use the key that comes with this. It's the key lock. Um, but if you don't have it, you can use uh, anything else and it'll still work. But what you're going to do is. Uh, Oh, I don't have the green one. Anyways, so you're going to push in on it. And then once you do that, you can start. I'm going to pull on the rails here as I do it. I'm going to push that down and I'm going to pull the rails up. And then this hole, now, this is just spring loaded, so keep your thumb over it. And lift it out by the trigger. Just push it up and keep your finger over that. And I got my thumb pushing down on it. And it comes out. It's just got a spring. So that's that button. Alright. Oh, yeah, I'll show you how that goes on here in a second. So yeah, this is a chassis gun, so it all comes out in one piece. Uh, let me show you how that went on real quick. It just likes to pop off on its own, but it basically sits right there. It goes up, and you can see it through the frame. You have your slide lock, which sits like this. And it sits on top of the, the arm, puts downward tension on it. That's how that works. 
ahead and take it off because we don't need it on there if we're going to disassemble it all. So now if you're if you're just doing a general cleaning and this is as far as you want to go, that's fine. Because um, it gets a little bit more difficult here coming up, but not terribly. <clears throat> so next, we're going to want to remove the safety, the actual safety lever. Um, it's right here, so you want to grab your small punch I don't know why I put all my punches up and just remove this front pin right here now you're gonna have to lift up on that spring and just take that pin out of there now that whole piece comes out as an assembly From here, I'll zoom in closer. If you want to, you can remove just the white. All this piece is just the to have the white. It also retains the spring. Um, you can remove that either by lifting out this part of the, the back of the spring. They usually will just pull the white piece out, and then the spring is free to come out. So. We'll set off that into the bowl. Go back to our chassis and remove the trigger. So the next I'm gonna need this punch. I'm going to push out this pin here. that pin is tapered and then I can remove it from back here so it just sits in the slot obviously where the catch is you see you have one spring that will come out of it like so the spring is important that you get it back in the exact right way or your safety won't work your trigger safety so it goes back in like that but I'll show you more importantly in the back where it needs to sit I'm just going to put it in there for now as we work on the rest of the gun. So next is the hard part. And it's not even all that bad. It's just going to be hard to, to see it as I do it. So next you have three things, three or four things back here. You have the catch, this, this whole metal piece here, or the sear. Um, you have a drop safety, which is next to it. You have the lever. Um, yeah, the catch lever, the catch lever, which is this piece. You can see right, you can see it there in the front. I'll show you when I get it out, but relatively simple. So if you look in here, you're gonna have two, a pin that runs all the way through right here. That's the front pin, the smaller one. You can go ahead and just push that out. Now it's, it is keeping tension on this spring here that comes over and sits on the, the catch. So it's got another leg that goes behind this pin. So when you push it out, that, that spring is going to pop off. Just like that. Now next is the... the The actual catch spring. The, so I'm gonna move this one out of the way. I hope this is coming up. For some reason, once I hit focus, it started focusing everywhere else, but right where it needs to be. So hopefully, you can see. It just kind of give you a quick visual. Um, but I do this and make it a little easier. What I'm gonna do is this the actual catch itself isn't pinned at all it just sits in there with the two studs and it kind of slides in there at an angle so what i do is i take the tension that the catch or the the lever is putting on it and i back off that tension i flip this inwards and that will allow this to flip outwards so you don't have to because right now it's under a lot of tension if i pop this pin out 
it's it, it's gonna go. So this is an easier way of doing it, I believe. So let me take my flat screwdriver that I used earlier. And I'm just gonna put it in between and kind of draw down some pressure. And that is going to allow this. Let me get it where you can see it here. To come forward. pop out so you I prefer to do that a little bit slower and I'll show you so this this is how we're gonna put it back together too this is how you do it easy without having to fight with springs and this is all the way sorry if I keep going off camera this is all the way tucked down and this sits in front of it so ideally you could push it down and get it in place so that's all I did was just relieve that pressure, flip this up, and now I can pull it out. So it already started to come out, so let me show you how it actually goes. So if it's sitting like this, you're just going to grab it, pull it over to the left, and just angle it out. You'll have that drop safety come with it, which is just held on there by nothing. And then you have the final pin to remove that lever. So I'm just going to push it out, let everything fall, and I'll show you how to put it all back together. That is the complete disassembly. Um, oh, wait, no, it's not. I'll do the magazine release, even though it's not reversible. Um, just because I want to be thorough, even though I hate this style of magazine release. We'll do it real quick before I put the sear back together. Let me back out. All right. So I'll try to get it on camera, but it's going to be hard because it's dark down in there. But if you look, it's just the magazine release is one solid piece all the way through. And it's just got a single spring in the middle that gives tension. And then that on one side of that spring, there's a little plastic guide that it sits kind of in a track. It's going to be hard to see, but I'll show you when we get it out if I can. So what I do is I'm just going to remove that spring. Usually I'll, you can, I wish the light would focus in there better. Maybe I can do it like this. I don't wanna do it if you can't see it. That's not really helping, is it? something else here see how the spring works you can see on this right side there's a little plastic piece that that this side is actually sitting on a stud that's on the magazine release but the other side is resting on a piece of plastic that kind of sits in a guide in the frame so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out I'm just gonna pull from this right side out Usually we'll use it with the uh, forceps, so that way they they don't go flying. So I'm just gonna grab that from the back. I'm just gonna grab a, a ring, basically. I'm just gonna start pulling it out until I can get a hold of it right there. So I know this this sucks, but you can see where I got my forceps. See, I'm gonna try to get a little bit better under the under the light. I'm just gonna grab that, and then I'll pull it out. Or I can also just take it off this side too if I want, so I can pull it. If I want I can just slide it off of this stud. Might be a little easier actually. Me. No, it's not. I want to do it the other way. Do it the original way. And then my needle nose or ridge, so it's hard to grab it. There we go. So I've got it part way out. So I'm just gonna. 
Once I get it that far, now I should be able to start sliding this off here. So now the magazine release can fall out, and I'll show you. Now it's easier to show them. I'm kind of at a weird angle, so I have to, to get it all on camera. I have to pull it kind of weird, so let me back out. Put everything where it needs to be, so I'll show you how that was. So this is that plastic I was talking about. Why my phone is not focusing. And it just sits. Okay, now stop focusing. How does it? Once that's in there, I'm playing with the focus. I'm sorry if I make it look stupid. So that spring goes in there, and it basically essentially sits in between. That's what gives it its tension. But on the inside of the frame, there's a very small little track that it'll pop in. So it might be something you have to play with because it's, it's going to be hard to see for me, you to see me putting it back in. Especially because I can't get the camera to focus. Let me see. All right, so let's go ahead and start putting it back together. We'll start with the magazine release, get it out of the way. We're just going to put it in the gun, in the frame. Then we're going to take this side. Now, I always want to start with, it's easy to, when you get it down in there, get this side and get it on. And then it'll kind of hang once it's all the way on there. And then you can slowly push this side in and get it to snap itself in place. So it goes in kind of like this with the squared body, horizontal. I apologize, you probably won't be able to see any of this, but I'll try to make it as visual as I can. Nope, that's even worse. You got a lot of light in here too. Alright, so I'm going to grab my forceps, grab a spring, oh come on, seriously. slide this other end on one on the and sometimes it likes to fly off there so you gotta be careful I'll show you once I get it there so this is what I'm talking about I've got one end of the spring wrapped around the stud on the left side from here I'll be able to try to work that other side of the spring compress it and push it into the right side so I'm gonna have to do this at an angle and I compress it usually like that and once I get it there right now all right so now we've got it back in its spot. So 
I know it's hard to see. I'm trying to see what I was doing it, but you can see. You don't want, if you have it in wrong, that plastic piece will move whenever you're rotating the magazine release. It kind of just kind of all sits down in there. It's kind of obvious when you have it. When you get it right, it it clicks in place, and you can you can just tell by looking at it it's in right. So if you couldn't see it, I apologize. I know that one was that was one of the things I was dreading about doing this video because I just knew you ain't gonna, you can't see down in there. It's such a small magazine and everything, or a magazine well. So. Okay, so now we've got the magazine release back in the gun. Took a little um, cut there, and now we're gonna work on getting the catch and everything back in. So, a really easy way of doing this, that's, you just got to do it in the, the correct order. So normally, you'd think, you, you always try to reverse your operations, right? So you'd take this and put this down in here, put your spring in. Now I'm going to show you a really easy way of doing it, because if you, if you know how this spring is tensioned, it's super hard to try to tension this spring, get it behind all of that. So let's just not worry about that and do it the easiest way we can. We're going to start with the catch. We're going to take it with the drop safety, just like this. Just going to sit on that stud. And what I do is I go ahead and put it in. So I got the, the chassis upside down, in the two slots. And I'm just going to start with the left side. You just got to... to get it right at the right angle to be able to maybe doing it this way will be better there you go you just got to slide it in right at the right spot so now it's still upside down right so what I'm gonna do no you want to this is longer so that there's the that drop safety is the biggest issue of doing it any other way so you can see the drop safety, I'm just going to let it fall and bring it up and just sit it on that roll pin that it sits on normally. So this is how, let me get that in there, I'll show you how it normally would sit. When it's all put back together, it's going to sit like this at the top. So it, that it's right underneath that roll pin that's in the frame, just a little, so I'm going to leave it sit on that, but I'm going to leave the catch up in the air. this up get it sitting to sit on that little lever right there on the little pin just so it sits exactly like this because it's so long that if I did the same thing I'm doing here which is putting all the spring in first and then pushing this down to collapse the spring instead of this isn't long enough so it'll hit when it's when this is in so just trust me, get to that point exactly the way it sits now. I'll go at it once again, but you can always rewind. I know I'm not. Just sits. It's just sitting on there. That little roll pin at the bottom. And then just got this sitting back here just chilling. It's not doing anything. Yet. Sometimes it might fall out and just hang out the bottom. That's alright. I mean it doesn't have to sit on that roll pin right now, necessarily. You can you can let it dangle, but so next we're gonna put in the the uh, the lever and the catch, the, the lever and the spring. So you're gonna need your lever, which you have the fat side and the skinny side. You're gonna want the skinny the fat side on the right, so it's gonna go down in like this, and your spring. So you're gonna want to take this spring with the the leg on the right, and then just put it together like this. Just sits that leg just sits right there and then I grab I just grab a slave you don't really have to you can get it back in there without it but it makes it a little easier and I'm gonna lift it up and then I'm just gonna put it if you can see where this legs gonna go it just rests right there inside that frame and now I'm gonna grab my pin and I'm gonna push that slave out I'm all lined up there. Now, see what I'm saying. 
Now when I push down on this, I have tension. But for now, I can just flip it backwards. Throw the slide pin out, and then grab your, your uh, actual the catch spring, and it's gonna go back in like this with the lever on the right, or the, the short leg on the right, just like that. Push out your pin again, just a little bit, just enough to get this in between on the side of it. Use a magnetic punch. Just set it in there and just like this. In between there. This goes right in between. Pin's sticking out further than I wanted it to. Just put it in there and slide the pin back through. Now, you can just let that spring fall back here. It's out of the way. You're, you're assembled right now. So now, once again, I'm going to put make sure my drop safety is sitting on that little roll pin. This is the part where it gets a little difficult. I'm going to have to back out to show you what I do. Um, it, it depends. It can go one of two ways. So when this is done, this is going to be all the way down. And it sits, this locks it in place, basically. So what I do... If I push it all the way down, and maybe sometimes you can do it with the catch itself, but it likes to get caught right there. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just pushing that down. Just be too mindful because these this thing does just fall right out of there. So so do that, and I just grab a pick. Yeah, I think I can't remember now. It's hard to remember exactly the right way. The best way. There's different ways of doing it. Let's go ahead and get it started and just pull it down with the pick. Just to, something small. And then I'm just going to flip this down and push it down until it locks itself underneath there. But. Let's see. I wasn't paying attention to where the. Uh, Where the drop safety was at the time and it got ahead where it shouldn't be now I don't think nope I can't I can't push it down in balloon so I'm gonna have to break break that free again and pay attention when I do it this next time so I'm just gonna do the same thing kind of I'm just gonna push down on that lever same thing you did to get it out and just bring it up like that now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make sure that lever is up here. So you might keep it upside down. Once again, push this down. If you can grab it with your finger, it'll be alright, but it's hard, to, it's hard to do. And then just push the catch down below it. That. All right, there we go. You still got this spring to deal with here in a second, but it's actually really easy. But that is how it goes back in. Hopefully it's all focusing. I can see it's not. It's actually really simple if you do it that way. If you If you try to imagine doing it the other way, having this already in here, and trying to make that all that tension and then slide the pin through um, that's, that's yeah you don't want to have to try that I thought that's what I was gonna have to do when I first did it and I figured that out so that's part of playing with stuff um, so now we're gonna put in the pin and get this spring set so back to this focusing issue this long spring that's coming out right here the long spring comes out and it sits on the I hate this phone back into the stud there so just pretty much the way it wants to let rest but this spring goes back and it will be behind this pin so this pin is what tensions that spring just look at that this is awful I'm sorry. I have shoddy camera work. Just 
can't get it to lock. I don't know what. So what I'll do is I'm just going to start to push this pin through, get it started. Ah, this focus is killing me. And then I'm just going to push this back. And then once I get it back far enough, I'm going to push the pin through. So let's take that inner leg. That's it's a small space. This is ridiculous. I'm gonna push that spring back. It's kind of hard to get it at the because this screwdriver's not long enough. It's too fat. Finally got it behind it a little bit. Just not. Hopefully you saw what I. Uh, I'm sorry. This is just the worst video I've ever done. I swear. So now that spring is behind that pin in there. So look when it. I wish I knew how to take the focus off an iPhone Pro. Whenever you tap on it once, you can't shut it back off. So it automatically wants to focus. All right, so anyways, now that I do that, I can push my pin through. It'll get to a point. You'll have to, uh, I think the, uh, let me see which one. It might be the drop safety blocks it a little bit, so you have to push it back just a little bit. So I'm just going to put some pressure on it and then just knock the... Drop safety back just a little bit. Is that what's blocking it? No. Start to see down in that hole and see if anything's actually blocking it or not. I'm not just pushing it through. It's the safety. What is going on? This pin is giving me more fits than anything else. Pull it back. The pin through. The pin bend or something. And sometimes you gotta push this back too. But, oh, you know what? I bet the catch is putting too much tension on it. There we go. So it slides through, so you might have to push back on the catch a little bit. This focus. <clears throat> okay now we're done with the sear and the catch and all that we can start on the easier stuff back on the trigger and get everything else put back together for this super long video my apologies for the focusing issues hopefully we'll uh, get it taken care of here that's not taken care of it I miss there's no menu when you're in video mode. All right, now that we've got the catch and the lever back in, um, <clears throat> I cut the videos so we could hopefully get the focus, everything back going the way it should be. But So next you're gonna have be putting your trigger back in. So you're gonna wanna take your trigger spring and it goes to bit back in. Let me show you. Like this down in 
small hole or in the slot in the trigger. So you should just be able to put it down in there. You want to make sure that you go at kind of at an angle because it can go down in there. You want to be able to see it when you bring it in. See right there that not hitting that focus button. You should be able to see that spring right there when you put it down. If you, There is a point where you can put it down in there and it won't be in the exact right, or it won't be in the spot so the trigger safety uh, won't reset. Um, so now, once you do that, this end of the spring sits right there in that slot in the frame. So just go ahead and get it up in there and get your tapered pin and drop it down in. slide the pin through and now well, push the pin's going down. now we're going to pull back the trigger you have to pull the trigger a little bit with your thumb and just get it into its spot okay so now we can put the safety back in if you took out the uh, spring and the safety, I'll show you how to put it back in real quick. Um, let's see. The safety goes in, or the little white stud, the retainer, goes in like this. And then I believe I just got that started and then brought the... Get it started in front of it. Oh. Get out of there. And then brought my trigger up. Just make sure that it sits in like that. So now that you've done that, grab your small pin. You're going to set this ledge here it's just going to sit right there on top of that trigger spring so it just goes in and it sits just like that just like that easy just sits right on top it's like a puzzle it goes right back in so you can take your pin and pin it you have to lift up that yeah. get it started once you get it started lift that spring up Slide it all the way through. <clears throat> there we go. So now the trigger is complete. The chassis is complete. So let's put it, let's see, is that where we got? Let's put it back in the frame. So first thing we're going to do is grab the frame, we're going to flip it over, and we're going to grab your button. Oh wait, sorry. One thing, one last thing, your slide lock. So slide lock spring, I showed you earlier, goes up in here, the pins like that. You should be able to see it from the top. Grab your slide lock. Set the arm on top of it like this and just wrap it up in there. Flip it around. It might fall off again by the time we get done with this, which it just did. No, oh, come on. So now we're going to put this, the actual button in. Now if you want to, it's going to pop off again before I get to it. If you want to make sure you're going in the right spot, just, let's see. Let's double check real quick. 
you can put it in and it'll slide all the way through and just pop through so it'll go back in like this. So go ahead and put it through the little hole right there in the frame. Or in the chassis, in the trigger, whatever. Push it down, good and firm. And then you're gonna take back end, slide it in. It's got these two little holes you'll see in the frame. And just slowly work it down in there. Make sure you're capturing that button. Once you get it to this point, you might have to just grab something to pop that button up and through. Yeah. Now that you've done that, you can put your see that's about it you can put your uh, drop lever back in the safety drop lever just get it started make sure the slots on top of the lever obviously lift up that spring again slide it all the way through till the spring falls back down and kind of clicks in place and then take your lever put it back in at the exact same angle took it out of just like that Make sure safety works all right so let's put the frame off to the side and complete the slot side slide and we are complete so the first thing you're going to do is your extractor this can be probably the hardest part of the slide um, just it can go one of two ways kids out there um, so you got your plunger and it's going to go back in like this so you're going to want if you can see you've got it's, it's tapered side that goes inward that's going to be towards the bottom and the track so you're going to want the the high angle so it's hard to I want to hit focus again because then we're going to be all those problems. You see that taper? You're going to want the low spot that's going to be like this when it goes back in. Because if not, you won't be able to get it the frame. So just have your. You see there's a small cutout like right there at the top. Of yours that'll be facing up so go ahead and slide the spring in and then one of two ways and it might be I'm gonna have to go all the way back to show you um, here we go again with this focusing crap I'll try one thing real quick lens maybe that's something to do with it um, so what I like to do is get my screwdriver and I, I usually try to use my body and get it down, compress that spring while I drop in the extractor. Some, some guns you get lucky and you can just put the extractor in, push it all the way back and get it to drop down in there. some guns so once you get oh look at that that went easy so it's actually a little bit easier than i thought um sometimes you can just snap it back in there sometimes you got to play with it and get it compressed all the way in and then drop the extractor in so got lucky on that one that uh makes up for all the other crap the gun put me through so next we'll put the firing pin back in and then we'll be home free of this terrible video. I apologize. Um, I'm going to have to. I bought a GoPro to do them. But then I started. Once I got this 11 Pro. Um, the picture was just so much better. And you know, the Android guys are going to be on here. But I have one. I, have a, um, did, I don't think the camera was any better. Um. So now I'm going to put the plate on. So now I've, I just did all that kind of without paying attention. Striker in, retainer pin, plunger in. And then what I do is just go ahead and get it lined up just like you would a Glock or anything else. 
get it started then you're gonna push down and just get it up in there S snap the plate in put your barrel and recoil spring in make sure you have no leftover parts of course make sure it's down Trigger's just as shitty as it always was. Nice. So, no, overall, it's a very nice gun. Um, I did a shooting video on it, but I probably won't post it because there's, you know, a thousand of them and it wasn't all that good. But it's, it's a good gun. It shoots extremely well. It's just I wish they had you know, something on this besides slick plastic. Um, the trigger's terrible and the sights are weird. You have to get used to them. But other than that, besides this bunk safety, uh, it's probably the dumbest design I've ever seen of a safety, but you know, I'm just, I know the Steyr guys probably love it, and you can get this model without it, so, you know, that's hearsay, that's just my opinion, uh, put some grips and a better trigger in it, you know, even that, just grips, really, trigger you can get used to, um, but those two things, I'm gonna make it a super nice gun, so I'd uh, love to see what the A2 did and some of the other Steyrs, this is my first Steyr I've done, and, um, you know, I was impressed with shooting it, uh, besides, you know, a couple little things, just like all guns have. So, thank everybody for watching. Once again, thank anybody that watches. We got it to uh, 1,000 subscribers. I know that's like 2% of all my views come from subscribers, so it's not very much. So, watch some more videos, people. Um, I got other videos I'll link in the description. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. We'll see you next time.